In another injury scare for Wolves, goalkeeper Rui Patricio was injured, unfortunately from his own teammate, on a play that really is something that never should even occur. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the world of sports. Anytime we've got a situation in a sport where something is happening that really is inexcusable and puts players at risk of getting hurt, I'm gonna be vocal, I'm gonna be outspoken about it, and this is exactly what happened here in the case of Rui Patricio. We'll take a look at the injury footage and what they did on the field to talk about what could have happened here and then address this controversy over the offsides call. As always, if you enjoy learning about this unique side of sports, please consider subscribing to the channel and let's get started. Here's the play towards the end of the second half where Rui was hurt here. The terrible part of this is right away we know that Salah was off sides here and you can see the Wolves players even putting up their hands to know this and the ref knows this as well but of course the rule is you don't wait to call and put the flag up until the end of the play. So now we've got all the Wolves defenders here sprinting back as quickly as possible because they don't know for sure that the offside is going to be called and of course they don't want to give up a goal. So then as this continues of course Patricio is coming out of the goal to try to make a save here and unfortunately gets essentially kneed in the head right there from his own teammate. Now, a couple of key things that worked in Patricio's favor here. Number one, he was at least aware that the collision was coming and was somewhat able to brace for the impact. You can see right towards the end here, he actually puts up his left arm because he sees that his teammate is coming in and is trying to do something to somewhat try to limit that impact. It looks like he maybe even gets his arm on the defender's right knee, somewhat trying to say, hey, I know this is coming. I'm going to try to protect myself here a little bit, which gives him a better chance of not getting seriously hurt. The other thing, too, that this allows you for is for your body's muscles to sort of prepare for that impact so that you don't take as severe of a sudden movement change in the neck or a serious load through the neck. So here as Patricio goes out he can get ready and somewhat try to limit the impact that this is going to cause. If this had happened when Patricio had no idea that the defender was coming, it probably would have been a worse outcome. We can see from this view again, he was able to get that left arm up a little bit, showing that he was ready for the impact, he knew it was coming, and he at least had a split second to sort of stiffen up and prepare his body. Unfortunately, his neck still did get twisted pretty severely here to the left, which puts the spine and other nerve structures at risk. Now, of course, even though he was able to get that left arm up, the momentum of the defender is still going to be enough that it's going to carry through that arm and at least cause some impact to the head, like we saw here basically on the right side of the face more so of Patricio. If we look at our biodigital anatomy tool to basically compare where this impact was, it essentially looks like it was kind of just in front of the ear of Patricio. And so here I've got the ear shown on the skull. So kind of somewhere right around, you know, this area where the knee collided with Patricio's head. The main bone that sits in that area is one called the temporal bone, and it has a piece that extends around here. You can see what we call here, this is the zygomatic arch, and sort of deep behind that zygomatic arch is gonna be where our TMJ, our temporomandibular joint, where the mandible articulates with the skull. It sounds like Patricio does not have a fracture. He essentially was awake and was able to recall everything that happened, which is great. But I'd be still worried about a lot of injury to the structures of this temporomandibular joint. It's pretty remarkable he didn't suffer a fracture in this area because this is pretty thin bone to take a direct impact from a knee, basically a player running full speed. And so that's why I think at least the ability for Patricio to put that arm up and start to turn away a little bit kind of turn some of his momentum away to allow that to kind of more glance off of him as opposed to turning directly into it. Let's go back to our on-field management here to point out some things the medical staff is doing. So first thing we see here when they get out to the field, number one, checking to see if he's alert. They saw that he was, you could see on the replay, he kind of had his eyes open. He looked like he was talking, but was choosing to remain still. Medical staff is coming out, trying to talk to him, see what's going on, see what hurts, and see what he's doing with his arms. He's already got his hands underneath his neck stabilizing his cervical spine. The provider who's at their head here and has the cervical spine is also who is essentially in control of this whole process. Whenever they're getting the cervical collar on him and getting him on the spine board, the person who has cervical spine is the one who's leading this whole process because that's the most crucial thing that you're trying to prevent from getting injured. So you want them to be the one who directs all the movements. Of course, we saw afterwards that Rui was in a cervical collar. That's what this blue brace is here. But again, you can still see that same person who was in charge from the beginning is still here at the cervical spine sort of guiding this whole process. We can also see he's got some oxygen on. He might've been a little bit anxious, feeling a little bit short of breath. This isn't something that you're gonna see done here in the US as much as we see it over in Europe. Then of course they got him on the backboard and took him off the field. Thankfully, we've got nothing but positive updates. It's now been about a little over 12 hours or so since this occurred. There's still a little bit of concerning kind of window here because some of these bleeds in the brain, some of these head injuries, 
can take a little bit of time to present themselves. If we go back to our anatomy tool, I'm gonna to hide some of these bones here of the skull because I wanna point out a specific artery. We have an artery that runs along the side of the skull here called the middle meningeal artery. And it's one that can become torn or damaged when somebody has head trauma, particularly a blow to the side of the head. This was the big fear with Raul Jimenez whenever we saw him take the shot to this side of the head. Injury to this blood vessel can cause something known as the epidural hematoma that can sometimes have this delayed presentation where people actually do pretty well during the first day or the first number of hours, but then start to decline as that bleed expands. So this is why for Patricio, they're still gonna monitor him. They're gonna keep very close attention over his symptoms to make sure he doesn't decline. Finally, this whole offsides thing. So. Clearly we could see right away that Salah was off sides here. The Wolves players knew it. They put their arm up. They knew he was off sides. The ref here knows it. So call it in the moment. This whole sequence happened because the other Wolves defender didn't know that it was going to be called. And so they're rushing back full speed to try to make a stop. Like, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to like trick the team? Are you trying to fool somebody? Just call it right away. Just have a whistle on that ref on the sideline to be able to blow it right away and say, no, plays over, stop playing, because this is the type of thing that can happen when this is the way that the rules are put in place. We've got the whole concussion thing we see in professional football. There's no reason to have another seemingly unnecessary way that the game's officiated that's only gonna put people at risk of getting hurt. Now there's gonna be some times where it's such a bang bang play where you don't have time to call it to stop somebody from getting injured, but this, he's got like so much field left to cover there's no excuse for why this play is not called dead right away because this would have prevented Rui from getting hurt. Thankfully, it sounds like he's going to be okay, but that could be something that paralyzes him. It could be something that causes death from a bad brain injury. So I hope this encourages professional football to take a closer look at this and change the way that this is called right now. That's it for the video, everybody. Thank you as always for watching. Let me know any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later.